What's up, everybody? Welcome back to 30 to Life. So a lot of y'all wanted to hear more about San Quentin and my experiences there. So basically, I'll tell you this. It was my first time in prison. This was 1998 when I caught my case. I got to San Quentin in 1999. Um, so this was my first time in prison. I didn't really know what to expect. But uh, when I got there, what happened was very unexpected. Um, I got th to San Quentin and found out that that's where they lock up all the Samoans. Um, this is just basically the way it was there because we were so deep. It wasn't even funny. I never knew that there were so many Samoans going to prison. But um, basically, San Quentin was like headquarters for us because uh, the whole Bay Area, San Quentin is, is reception center for the whole Bay Area. And um, the Bay Area got big Samoan communities. So you got big Samoan community in San Francisco, uh, East Palo Alto, um, San Jose, uh, Richmond, Oakland, you know, um, Sunnydale, uh, uh, San Mateo, you know, San Mateo is a gang of Tongans out there. Um, but yeah, just hella Islanders out there in, in the Bay Area. And so San Quentin being the reception center, that's where we all come through. And man, I'm telling you, man, there was just so many of the of us there. It wasn't even funny. Um, at one point in time, in one of the sections in San Quentin, there was 30 Samoans, just Samoans in one section. So that tells you right there, man, that that's just, that type of shit is unheard of. And that's real. Um, you know, usually you'd be from stories I would hear and just from going to CYA and shit, you know, I'd be the only Samoan, you know, on, on the on the yard or in the building or whatever, you know. So it, it just was unheard of. But um, in San Quentin, that's where we was at. And let's just say the program there, man, the, the, the homies, we ran a, a pretty good program there, a tight program. So what was cool too is um, being that there was just so many of us, we had workers in, in, in the child hall, we had workers in the laundry room, we had workers in, in, in the canteen, we had workers, you know, as clerks. So it was just, you know, it was basically, you know, our spot. And um, there wasn't nothing that we couldn't get when we were there in San Quentin. We had everything there. so. You know, the program there was was tight and I really appreciated that experience because when I was growing up, you know, I didn't really hang out with my own peoples. Um, there wasn't many Samoans in Vacaville. So, you know, I hung out with just friends that I met. But um, to really be around my people was a different story. So, you know, I didn't know what it was like being a Samoan, you know, period. Real shit. Uh, I've been Americanized my whole life, you know what I'm saying? So when I got to San Quentin, it was different. My people showed me a whole different way of life. Um, I came in there uh, banging, like, like, you know, because, and I'll tell you why I came into San Quentin, you know, trying to bang and shit. So funny story is when I hit San Quentin at the time, you know, because of my loyalty to the Crips in CYA, when I was locked up in CYA, See, when I got out of CYA, I um, let all the Crip homies there know that I wasn't going to be banging when I hit the street. So basically, if if they saw me back in CYA again on a violation, you know, I was going to be coming in just as Samoan and doing my thing. And they were cool with it. You know what I mean? So that was the agreement I have with the Crips. So basically, I wasn't running with them no more. But because my loyalty to them when I went to uh, San Quentin and, and how they took care of me when I was in CYA, I felt that, you know, I'm just going to go back to what I know and, and just be with the Crips. So when I got to San Quentin, I was, you know, basically looking, you know, where my, where my Crip homies at, where my Lokes at, you know. But uh, again, my people were so deep there that, you know, of course, they're going to hit me up and see what's up with me. So I got pulled to the side by one of the big homies and um, he basically just ran the program down to me on how, you know, we was getting down in there. 
And he basically gave me an option. He told me, hey, if you want to run with the Crips, I can move you over there into the cell with, with them and you can stay with them and do the rest of your life sentence with them. Or you can run with your peoples where you belong and, you know what I'm saying, get to know the culture better and we'll take care of you, you know. And so basically that was my option. And so I just decided like, yeah, man, I'm going to run with my folks. And that was my decision. And so when I got with the program there in San Quentin, it was just it was a whole different experience for me, man. It was like coming home. It was just one of those things. I know it sounds funny because, you know, we in prison. How you can you be coming home? But that's what it was. You know what I mean? We coming home. We coming back to our peoples, our roots. And uh, so when that happened, you know, they laced me up. They taught me a lot. You know what I mean? They laced me up on how to do time. And, you know, and that's just basically how it was. But I was told when I was there, too. You know, the next prison you're going to go to, Ron, ain't going to be like this. You know, we short everywhere else. This is the only place that you're going to see us this deep. And he was right, because everywhere I went after that, we were short. It's a trip because, you know, today my peoples have come a long way, you know, as far as being, you know, recognized by the administration in, in the California Department of Corrections, because you know, everybody, you know, all races and everybody, you know, have the right to practice their religions in the prison system. But uh, we never really had nothing, you know. So we would have to just jump on Christianity or, or Catholics or Muslims or anything like that. But um, now, you know, they shit, they practice, you know, our traditional ways and, and, and things like that. And they're, you know, you got the hula. And so what's cool is basically they recognized us as, you know, kind of like the Native Americans. And so there's a law where, you know, the Native Americans are allowed to practice their religion anywhere um, at any time. And so basically uh, we fall up under that because the native, the Hawaiians, um, Hawaii, Hawaiians were recognized as natives in, in you know, in the law books. So we were able to fall up under that law and come up and, and, and really have our own thing in there, you know. So we were able to do, you know, practice our own traditions in within those prison within the prison system. So San Quentin was one of the places that, you know, we broke ground for things like this. But uh, yeah. So anyways, that's just how it was in San Quentin, man. At the time I was going through there, like I said, it was the late 19. It was the late 90s. And the early 2000s, man, if you know anybody that was there, they'll tell you, you know, how thick we was there and uh, what type of program we ran there. So basically, you know, uh, that's where I came home and uh, ended up doing my whole 10 years in prison, you know, riding with my peoples. And uh, I think that was the best decision I made when I made when I came to prison. So, yeah, that's it, man. So I hope you guys enjoy the story. And man, y'all know what time it is. Stay the fuck out of trouble.